Good morning, friends of Gilbert Elementary School and students. Today we are looking at more artwork from Japan. And I'm gonna show you a couple of very simple things that you can do at home or in the classroom to express yourselves, okay? That's what art's all about, guys. That's why it's so interesting that a lot of our artwork is so different from our neighbors. Okay, so the first thing I wanna to talk to you about are Japanese pagodas. And we have been making these wonderful buildings. And one of the things that we found out about is that the Japanese started building these houses or towers in the seventh century because they were earthquake resistant, okay? And in Japan, it's unfortunate but true, they have a lot of earthquakes there, so the ground shakes. So they came up with this really great idea to build these houses that are towers, and each one of them has a different level, okay? A lot of times they're odd numbers, like three stories high or three levels high, five levels high, or seven levels high. And I don't know why that is, but I guess it works a little bit better, okay? So the first thing that you're gonna do is we're, these are called, the, the towers are called pagodas. Can you say pagoda? Awesome, did you just say pagoda? Ah, kiss your brain, you got it. And so anyway, the, I was thinking about this because in California they have a lot of earthquakes too. And I know they do have, you know, Chinatown there and they have houses from Japan there. In China and Japan, they have a lot of similarities um, in their architecture, in their house building. And so you see a lot of these out in California and there's a reason for it, okay? Not only is it culturally beautiful, but it is also, you know, a good idea because it will withstand earthquakes and tremors, okay? So check it out, guys. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna be thinking about triangles, okay? Triangles are those wonderful three-sided geometric shapes, all right? Okay, and we, we are going to build an odd number. But one thing I love about these houses from J Japan and China is that the rooftops sometimes curl up and sometimes they even put a little lantern on the, on the sides of them. So check them out, guys. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do is you wanna do a little rectangle up at the top and sometimes they have a little line up there. Do you know what that's for? That's a weather vane. So that if lightning strikes, it goes to that and it doesn't burn your house down, okay? And um, I don't know why we don't have weather vanes on our houses these days. Maybe they're made so that if lightning hits your house, it's okay. Cause, cause, uh, but I don't know, they used to have weather vanes that were metal on top of their houses. Now what you wanna do is you wanna do a curvy line like this, curvy line like that. Check it out guys. You see, and I'm gonna be drawing this, not looking at it. So it's not gonna be perfect. But you wanna go like this for your first rooftop. Check it out. Then you want to do, you're starting at the top, maybe a little window in here, which is a rectangle, okay? And then you want to do another curve that goes out, okay? And another rectangle. I'm going to do another window, okay? Another curve that goes out. Hmm. Fun. I think I'm just going to do three right now. But... I was talking to a student earlier, asking her, what do you like about these? And she said, I like them because they're so tall. And they really are. So what happens is when there is a tremor or an earthquake in Japan, these houses actually move like a snake. They move with the land. And so that's how they stay together and they absorb the shocks. Now, earthquakes are a natural phenomenon. So anytime you live somewhere where the weather affects your house, you have to take precautions. And that is why down at the beach, they have all of the houses on stilts. Beach houses are usually up off the ground so the water can flow underneath them. Check it out. Now guys, once you get your house on, you might wanna decorate the roof because a lot of times these are tile top roofs. So you could use a Kirby line Make this really beautiful, okay? Like this. Okay, just relax, take a deep breath, and add some patterns. Check it out, guys. All right, now I think I'm gonna do my horizon line, which is line that goes back 
and forth, a straight line that goes like that, so we can see the difference between the sky and the ground. And in Japan, as well as China, they have these beautiful mountains that go like this, and they grow the rice paddies on them. And a lot of animals live up there on those mountains, too. They're very unusual. Check it out. That's pretty cool. All right, now we're talking. All right, you might want to do a bridge, too, because in China, they have, in Japan, they have a lot of bridges that they have these little ponds of koi fish that swim underneath them. Mm -hmm. Those little fish. Okay, check it out. All right, here we go. Looking good there. All right, so notice how I made that be a little bit wider. That gives the, pers the idea of a perspective. All right, also another thing in uh, Japan, they love gardens and they like to do things symmetrically. Symmetrical means the same on both sides. So if I did a little tree here uh, and they're known for their cherry blossom trees, okay? So if I did a tree right here and I wanted it to be symmetrical, I'd probably do one that was very similar or the same on the other side. Okay, I'm just gonna make a Y here to make that look good. Okay, check it out. And if I wanted to show overlapping or something like that, I would just do another one behind it. Right. Mm -hmm. They love flowers and roses. They're really, really pros at doing gardening. And then I would put a letter T inside of my windows. Maybe put some little shutters on it rectangles like that, okay? Now, after you've gotten this, you might want to color it in. You might want to paint it. If you decide to paint it, make sure that your name is on it, okay? There we go. So that we know who did this and your grade. I'm gonna be in third grade right now, okay? Third grade, okay? And then um, if you decide to paint it, don't forget, um, you want to tickle your brush in the water, okay, and then tickle your brush on the paint, and that will activate your colors. Now, um, if you don't have enough water and you don't feel like you're getting enough paint, you might feel like mashing it, but if you mash it, your paint will never dry, so you really need to use that water. That's why it's called a watercolor. Tickle a little bit, and you will get a whole lot more energy and paint and um, pigment paint has pigment that means it has color particles in it you will get a lot more of that on your brush to spread around or you could do the wet on wet technique where you wet it first and then you tickle your brush of water tickle your brush and paint and dot it and it goes whoosh, okay so enjoy your japanese pagoda if there's an earthquake know that your little house is going to stay together it almost looks like a dr seuss house doesn't it but today's lesson is in architecture. So enjoy yourself, guys, and um, enjoy your pagoda. All right, we'll see you soon. Have a great summer break. And this is Miss Davis mwah, signing off and thanking you for everything this year. I can't wait to see what you're gonna do. Bye.